Welcome to this episode of the Million Dollar Mastermind, where we get real world insights on winning from people who have accomplished amazing things. I'm your host, Larry Wydell, and let's get going. I'm talking with Alex McInvan. Hello, Alex. Hello, Larry. How you doing? Good, good. How's the weather out there in California? Oh, just beautiful. Just gorgeous. Gorgeous. 70, 72 degrees. Just gorgeous. That's unusual for you guys. Usually the weather is so terrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You've lived out in California for how long? Oh, gosh. I moved to California in 1982. So do the math. 40, yeah. 40 years. Yeah. And so uh, uh, why did you go to California? Well, I went to school in the Midwest in uh, Missouri, right? At University of Missouri. Uh, and um, when I graduated, uh, I, I was an engineer. I, I, had a, I got my bachelor's and master's degrees in, in uh, civil and then structural engineering. And so that's what everybody did back in the early 80s. You know, you, you went west, young man, and uh, you, you looked for jobs because all the jobs were on the West Coast, basically. Yeah. Uh, especially construction boom and all that. And so you've been uh, uh, in your own business for a long time. How big, how would you describe the scale and scope of your business right now? Obviously you're a million dollar earner or, or you know, to qualify to get on, on the uh, rotation here to be interviewed, but uh, you got a successful business. How would you describe your business to other people in terms of volumes and, and things that's big to you, you know, that's impressive to you, and it might be impressive to other people. Well, uh, we have uh, over 1,600 licensed agents uh, in financial services. We're across probably about 20 states now, and uh, uh, we have multiple brokerage firms that are a part of our organization now, and uh, we're licensed in, in all the different financial products that you can imagine that you could think of. And uh, it, it's been an incredible journey, but it, I don't know if it's my personality or if it's, it's a particular type that no matter where you're at, you're always feeling that a oh, man, I'm, I'm not big enough and I need to grow and I need to expand and, and uh, we need to be a lot bigger than this, but, but we're very excited where we are right now. And uh, uh, what's the do deal about your pool? getting in the uh on television was that your pool oh yeah yeah we uh i just sold that house i, I bought a house out in vegas uh and uh it, it was uh i don't know we got a call one day uh it was hgtv i think they said they said yeah we've we've heard about your pool we want to come over and do a thing and and uh they spent gosh 10 12 14 hours and i think it became like a five minute segment you know how that works with video right. productions yeah. right <laughs> And uh, it, it was fun. It was a great experience. And uh, yeah, we ended up on uh, top 10 greatest pools of all time <laughs> with something like, I don't know, but we, uh, it, it had a, it had, it, it had a, a pool. It had a uh, sort of a, what we call the water feature, but then it also had a lazy river. I think that's what did it. It was that's the lazy river. Yeah. yeah. And so you had your own lazy river. Well, good for you. And so <laughs> uh that had that had to uh help the sale when it came time to sell the thing it was great but uh you know since i sold it uh, it's gone up another two million dollars in value so i should have waited one more year but you know shoulda coulda woulda right <laughs> wow jump two million in one year in one year can you believe that yeah i mean we did really well with it actually we, we did quite well ourselves so wow and so uh uh any more homes in Vegas or are you still, are you? No, we I, sold that house and now we're full time at, back in. Yeah. Colorado we're back in one time and you know, you've looked at a couple of places. Yeah. So uh, uh, we purchased the, uh, when we sold the house in Vegas, we bought a place up in Lake Arrowhead, which is right. about an hour from, from where we live here in Southern California. So we get the best of both worlds. We get the, the great summers, we get the snow, the winters, we right. get all of that out here. Yeah, fantastic. And so without the travel, flying back and forth to Colorado, you know, so yeah, that's nice. Now, talk about uh, your business and uh, 
we're going to share what you've learned about winning and what winning is to you and how about also your family. I mean, you've won in business, you won in your personal life, been able to do to uh, enjoy life, not run a rat race, even though it was a rat race in the beginning, but also raise pretty, pretty much a sizable uh, family. You've got, is it four uh, children? Yeah, we have uh, triplet boys. Uh, that are uh, 27 years old now. Wow. And then we have our daughter that's uh, actually tomorrow is her birthday. She's getting ready to turn 22. So we've raised, we, we conceived, delivered, and raised four children while we were building our business, basically. Wow. And, and I've heard the stories of how bad a husband you were when you're... <laughs> <laughs> when your wife was left at home, uh, raising those kids, but I, I guess you've compensated uh, in the meantime. <laughs> well, you know, we kind of we kind of made a deal. We said, uh, look, I'll work 10, 12 hours outside the home. You work 24 hours inside the home. And I think that, that's a fair split right there. So, <laughs> you never, know, when, when guys tell me that you're not a salesman. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you know, when guys tell me, they go, you know, my wife doesn't work. I go, uh, I ask them, do you have children? Yes. Well, you better stop saying that your wife doesn't work because she, she works harder than you do, buddy. So, yeah. <laughs> so Alex, you got, uh, where did you get your entrepreneurial type uh, experience? You know, I've got the, the engineering background and training as well and that does help you when you're building a company because you think in terms of systems logically you know breaking things down putting them in sequences that gives you an incredible advantage which it probably took me 20 years to realize uh how fortunate i was with that background but it kind of puts you ahead of the eight ball when it comes to growth particularly but it doesn't put doesn't help at all when it comes and you're just by yourself and you've got to grind it out uh, step by step from the beginning yourself. So talk about how you got into this thing, what caused you to get excited, how you located what you're going to be doing and all that. Yeah, you know, uh, you're right. The engineering mind and the scientific mind does help you put systems together, but engineers and scientists and mathematicians are not necessarily known for uh, business builders, right. not necessarily known as entrepreneurs. So Thankfully, I had the entrepreneurial spirit in me and, and the bug. I, I was bitten by the bug years ago. I remember when I was 13 or 14 years old, I, I couldn't wait to go out and get a job. Of course, I couldn't because I was so young, but I just wanted to go out and make some money and, and, and all that. But uh, uh, it, it, was, it was just a complete fluke the way I was sort of pulled in to the business environment a friend of my dad's, you know, called him and said, Hey, listen, uh, you know, would you be interested in getting involved? And my, my dad said, Oh no, it's not for me, but maybe my son. So he called me anyways. I mean, I, I kind of pursued this. I, I, I called the guy up. I asked him where to go, how to get more information, find out all about it. Back then there was no GPSs or there was no computers yeah. or internet. So I took out the old Thomas guide and I got, uh, directions remember getting directions from somebody yeah, <laughs> yeah. and uh, so then then just went to uh, an office and I listened to the message that was given about entrepreneurship about helping families and then becoming wealthy in the process of doing so and I thought why not what do I, what do I have to lose now at this point how long had you been working uh you know in a regular job situation and what what you obviously had some frustrations and were hitting your head against the wall for something. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I was in my previous career for a total of about 17 years. And, and I count the six years of college, you know, four years for, for one degree, two right. years for another degree, and then 11 years of working. So I kind of look at all that as one, one chunk. Right. And it's, it's, it's weird because, uh, on my first day at my very first, uh, you know, real job, professional job, uh, I thought to myself, are, are you kidding? Is this what I went to school for? for right. six years? I mean, I, I knew on that very first day that that's not what I was going to end up doing for the rest of my life. Now, you know, the way things worked out, I, I worked as an engineer for 11 years. 
but I, I just knew, I just knew that wasn't for me. I was, I was always, like you said, frustrated. Uh, I wasn't happy. I, I financially, I thought, oh my gosh, if I'm struggling, you know, I was working, my wife was working and we were, you know, we were, we were barely making ends meet with two professional salaries, incomes coming in. And I thought this is not the way I thought it was going to be. So I was always on the lookout. I was always looking to see if there was something else. I remember one time I heard a, um, a, an ad on the radio about uh, there was a job expo or something at the Long Beach Convention Center. So I, I called my brother. I said, hey, let's go. Uh, I grabbed them, threw them in the car. We drove down to Long Beach. I walked around the place for hours, picked up about a thousand brochures, you know, went home, put the brochure bag in the corner, never opened it, never looked at a single one. <laughs> so, yeah, so I always had that spirit of wanting to do something different. And so uh, you had to be making good money though. I mean, you had to, you know, I, I know you, you would have been successful. You would have got promotions. You would have moved up. I'm sure the company was hurt when you left and uh, they felt like they had a loss. So why did why couldn't it turn into a satisfactory life for you? Well, uh, I'll tell you a quick story. Uh, you know, when I went up, when I went to the president of the company where I was working, my very last job, uh, and I and I had a nice conversation with them. I told them, you know, I was I was thinking about leaving because I, I was I had started my own business on the side, and I was doing it part time for uh, for about maybe three or four months. And I, and I very quickly decided to walk away from, from the 17 year career that I, that I was talking about. Yeah. So uh, I sat down with the president, had a very, very, very pleasant chat. And he, he said, he turns around and said to me, he goes, Alex, what, what can we do? What, tell me, tell me, just tell me whatever it takes. What can, what can we do to keep you here? And, and I looked at him straight in the eyes and I said, well, um, you know, a piece of the company wouldn't hurt. Right. Uh, you know, nice uh, starting point. Yeah. yeah, give me some ownership in the company and, I, and then we can talk. No sooner had those words left my mouth that he stood up very abruptly ah. and, <laughs> and shook my hand very, very nicely, very kindly. And he said, well, have a great life. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, when you have those conversations, you need to know going in, you better be ready to uh, walk out the door uh, on your own because uh, uh, there's something about letting the other side know that you're thinking generally not made up your mind, but you might possible just want to let them know in their mind what they hear is he's gone. And <laughs> right, right. Uh, so as a matter of fact, you just brought up a, a great negotiating tactic of mine in life in general is uh, I, I never negotiate a deal that I'm not willing to walk away from. And talk about how that's played out for you. So it, how, it, you, how you learned that and, and how that's worked out for you. Well, I learned it from not being that way and, and sort of being mealy mouth and being, you know, and it, 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 I think it, it comes through it shows when you're not coming from a position of strength. And so the other side sees that and, and so makes the negotiations a lot, a lot harder. But I am willing to walk away from a deal that I sit down to negotiate no matter what. And, and, and I will walk away from it if it's not something, if I feel like I'm not getting the thing that I'm negotiating for. Whether it's, a, it's at an auto, auto dealership or I'm purchasing a property or or whatever, however that that's, comes about, I, I will walk away and I'm willing to walk away. And I figure never marry yourself to any one deal because there's always a better deal that'll, that's, that's lurking right around the corner. And what were you, uh, can you think back and remember what you were trying to buy that uh, when this occurred to you that uh, I've, I've learning something here? <laughs> well, uh, one specific time we were at a Lexus dealership and my wife and I wanted, she wanted this car so bad. It was just a beautiful car. And, and uh, uh, 
the, the salesman, you know, he was going back and forth, doing his little dance and doing his thing and bringing in the sales manager and the general manager and the, and the, and the, the janitor and, you know, bringing different people to the table. And so, uh, my wife said, oh, you know what? You forgot something in the car. Uh, let's go grab the thing from the car. So we both walked, got up and started to walk out, not even intending to really, yeah. you know. Right. And, and the guy ran after us. He said, okay, okay, okay. Whatever, you, whatever you want, whatever you want. <laughs> so that worked out really well. So you got the deal and you got, got a lifetime lesson right in the process, huh? Exactly, exactly. And, uh, you know, Alex, that's a concept that uh, comes up all the time is like, you learn how to win by paying attention as you go through life. Just notice what doesn't work and notice what does work and do the things that do work and just stop doing the things that don't work, you know? Uh, what a concept, what a concept, right? <laughs> what a concept. What a concept. As my uh, ski instructor buddy from uh, uh, Argentina says, Chino, he says, you see, that, you know, when he's, you're skiing, he says, you see that, you know, when you do that, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> you see, when you go in the turn and you do this kind of thing, don't do that. <laughs> and that's his big instruction. And so uh, uh, there's a lot to be learned by analyzing what's happening to you and say, you know, I just stepped into it and I didn't have to step, I could have stepped over this way or I could have said something different or I could have kept my mouth shut, you know? And uh, so how did you feel as you launched your business? Cause you said, you, you know, you, you 17 years in prep and you reached the point where uh, time to make a change. How did you feel when you made the launch and what would you tell people about having the, uh, about getting to that point and then having the guts to follow through? Does it take guts or does it just take uh, preparation? Well, maybe in my case, it was more stupidity than anything else, but, <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's actually a really good question. Uh, you know, I was, I had it up to here with working a job. I, I, honestly, I don't know how people do it. I don't know how they show up day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, decade after decade, how they put up with the disrespect, how they put up with the, 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 the politicking, the backbiting, the, you know, all this stuff that goes on at, at every kind of job, all the, all the false promises, all the, uh, and, and so I, I, had, I had had it, I was way overdue and truth be told, I made the jump way before I was ready. I mean, it, it, was, it was a matter of, of two or three months, maybe three or four months after I, you know, I, I, was, I got my license in financial services uh, on October 1st of 1993. And I went full time. I, I walked away from my 17 year career uh, in February of 1994. So that's about five months. Yeah, it is about five months later and I wasn't financially ready. We, we had over $52,000 in credit card debt at the time. Um, and, and I'm not a big spender. I mean, it just, it just happened. That's how life works. I, I, I made an attempt at another business and I was trying to finance that business through credit cards, which is probably the dumbest thing I could have done. So uh, by the way, I had no savings. I had no, no 401k, no, uh, my, my entire life savings was summarized in a, in a blue plastic jar with coins in it. That was literally the only thing I could show for 17 years of, of toiling you know, for somebody else and, and helping build somebody else's company, somebody else's business. And, and so whether, you know what, I don't know what it takes, but everybody in my life, everybody said, don't do it. They advised me against it from parents to brothers, to family members, to, uh, you know, my wife, she'll admit that she was also the, the, a strong voice against me making that move. And I figured I was 32 years old, almost 33 years old at that time. I kind of got a, a little bit of an early start in life. If you do the math, go work it backwards. You know, I started college kind of a little bit younger and all that. Yeah. But that's, that's, that's a whole other story for a whole for a different time. Right. But uh, uh, I thought, you know what? 
it's now or never. I mean, I, I, I got I got you know, What's the worst thing that could happen? I try my hand at entrepreneurship at business. It doesn't work out. I can always go get a job. You know, the thing that people hang on to uh, and, and they cling on to, uh, it's the thing that I thought, eh, if this doesn't work out, I can always go get one. It's no big deal. Jobs are a dime a dozen. I'll, I'll, somebody will hire me. So I don't know if it was, uh, if it was uh, what did you call it, courage or whatever it was. It was more. And then, then right, I remember right after I did that, Right after I did that, I thought to myself, OMG, what have I done? What, what, you know, how stupid could a guy get? What, oh, my gosh. I'd lay awake at, uh, at night in, in bed, you know, thinking, just staring at the ceiling, thinking, oh, my God. I, you know, because I, I walked away and I burned the ship. I mean, I literally, I, I burned the ship. I, I blew up the bridges. I, I did all of that. So because I know myself, I, I didn't want to give myself a way to go back, a means to go back, right. you know, at that very moment. So, um, uh, you know, it, it was it was touch and go for a while. And then, but, you know, the thing that people are afraid of is that that feeling, the feeling of fear, that feeling of, I don't know what to do, the, you know, I'm not really good at this or, or uh, but that was the feeling I needed personally to encourage me, to push me, to, to get me, get my butt out of the hut, as we say. And, and so that's what got me to work even harder. All right. Thanks so much, Alex. That wraps up this episode. Consider leaving a rating and review if you like what you heard. In addition, I have a free video for you and it contains my best insights from 20 years of running my own business and also coaching million dollar earners. You'll find it at whitelonwinning.com forward slash webinar. Thanks for listening and do it big.